People have been picking and preserving fruit for generations. My search for some fruity flavour led to a couple who capture the flavours growing all around them and bottle them. This is Cairn and Moore Winery in Perthshire, where Ron and Judith Gillies have been brewing up country wines out of fruit, flowers and even leaves for over a quarter of a century. I'm wondering whether their unique flavours will be the perfect complement to my fruit pies. Judith's love affair with country wine started many years ago. My mum made everything. She cooked, she baked, she made beer, she, and she made wine. And then I met Ron, who had got this book, and he'd started making wine because he was interested in drinking, I think. And so when the two of us got together, it was uh, obviously meant. Now, Judith's following in her mum's footsteps, and alongside husband Ron, they're turning their passion into profit. Their winemaking venture has been a phenomenal success, and their business now employs over 20 people to crush, ferment, and barrel their wines with some outstanding results. It's a lot of fun uh, making fruit wine, um, but, uh, you know, it's quality stuff. We've won some, some major awards over the years, and... Uh, just say, uh, kept back some of this raspberry. I mean, it's, we go back to 2004, but it was the champion British wine of 2004. Seems a long time ago, but they actually stopped doing the competition after we kept winning it. So standards are pretty high, and it's not surprising. Persia enjoys an abundance of farm-grown berries, so Ron and Judith had the best quality fruit right on their doorstep. This is a fantastic raspberry growing area and the raspberry is coming in really flavoursome and it makes a lovely, really intense, fruity, uh, rosy wine. It's really nice. Ron and Judith are always on the lookout for new ingredients for their country wines. Today they're doing some old-fashioned foraging to find a new flavour wine to add to their repertoire. Even when you're out for a walk, you know, he's always picking things and chewing them and saying, try that, try that. Going, you're picking something, and while you're picking that, you notice something else. You think, oh, I'm going to have a go at that next year. This is one I've had my eye on for a long time, is the meadow sweet. Quite powerful scent. It might be a thing that you would blend with something else. I know it's going to be good. Meadow sweet wine sounds promising, and Judith's got an idea for a complimentary flavour. So I'm picking some oak leaves here. Um, because I'm thinking that the meadow sweet might blend well with the oak leaves. Oak leaf and meadow sweet is an interesting combination, but they'll have to wait to see. Wine making doesn't happen overnight. Anything we're making new, we'll always make a small quantity and then try different blends, different recipes. So it often takes quite a few years actually, you know, because uh, your fruit or flowers are only in season for one year. And then your finished wine isn't ready till the next year, so it's a quite a prolonged process. Ron and Judith are after the perfect wine for my fruity puds. And I can't wait to see what bottled delights they've got in store for me. Our country wine producers, Ron and Judith, have joined me in the kitchen. Hello. Hello there. Hi. I think that the... Um, the wines that you're currently doing at the moment just blow my mind. I, I was watching it thinking, I've got to try some of this stuff. Now, this one is the meadow, this is the one we saw, the meadow sweet. Yeah, this is the trial one for this year. And you liked it, you, you enjoy this? Yeah. We some... hardly know it, it's still quite young. It's yeah. the first time that we've uh, produced this one. I've had my eye on it for years. Yeah. Wow, it smells totally different. You know it's alcoholic, you can yeah. smell that. Yeah, yeah. But What's the proof in that? <laughs> it's it's, it's, uh, it's only about 13.5%, but um, it's really, I find it really honey and lemon. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, it's got yeah. such depth of flavour. Yeah. It's not a liqueur and it's not a wine. It doesn't feel like a convention. It's, it's like right in the middle. That's right. Exactly. It's, it's That's between the two. I said about yeah. uh, our country wine. Yeah. It's like something in between. Now, I've got to try this next one. Sorry, I'm going to go through all of them. I've got those five, six. Six to go through as well. Oop, right, here we go. <laughs> this is the elderflower wine. Uh, come on, drink up. <laughs> I'm not going to give you new glasses. I want you to drink out of this one. Now, this is the elderflower wine. Which is your 
I mean, which is your current favourite at the moment? Which one do you think? Yeah, that's the one I love. Well, I like in the summer. I like the elderflower in the summer because it's a nice, uh, lighter, flowery um, wine, you know, very summery. And if you're lying in a hammock and a cool glass of elderflower wine, it's just great. <laughs> A lot cleaner on the palate. Mm. It's not mm. sweet, mm. but it's a lot cleaner on the palate. Yep. You can taste yep. the elderflower, yep. though. Yep. That's beautiful. It might look like I'm just quaffing wine here, but every good baker has to know his ingredients. Look at the colour of that. That's incredible. Yep. Oh. oh, that's nice, that. Ah, it is. It's got... Um, it's got a thickness to it. Yeah. It's got a more body to it. It's very smooth, though, going in. Yeah. Cooking with that as well, making that into a casserole and putting that with some steak mm. and making it mm. a stew. The the, the flavour that you get, much more than you would a conventional wine. Mm. It's got a you, lot you, of identity. Yeah, you're adding so many layers to the dishes by adding this sort of wine. I love it. Ron and Judith have brought me some great summer flavours, and I want to use three of them to complement my very different fruit pie fillings. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make some fruit tarts. Now, at the moment, I've got apricot, I've got pear, and I've got apple. Now, I've chosen some wines to go in there. And I'm going to add a little bit of mascarpone to the pear and apple again, just to give it a little bit more liquid to it as well. Blended with the wines, I think it would work quite well. I've got some flour in the bowl. I'm going to add some butter to that as well. And this is where I get my hands a bit dirty. So I'm going to rub this down into crumbs. You can see it's getting there now. It's beginning to break down. Then I'm going to add the egg to that as well, straight in. And then I'm going to add a little squeeze of lemon juice as well. Again, helps break down the pastry. And then I'm going to add some icing sugar. The sweetness is going to come from the icing sugar. You can use caster sugar if you want. But icing sugar keeps it nice and smooth. So you're not going to meet any grains in there at all. You can see already with the egg in there, it's actually beginning to come together quite nicely. You see, it's quite short at the moment, so we've got to work that a little bit. So I'm going to add a little bit of water, a little drop to it like that. It's probably enough. Again, get your hand in there, mix it round. Try and keep all the mess in the bowl, because what happens at this stage is people tend to put it on the bench and it just get really messy. But you're going to try and collect all the ingredients so your bowl is actually nice and clean. Bring the pastry together nice and lightly. This will ensure that your pastry is not overworked and it's beautiful and flaky. That's enough. At that stage, I'd wrap it up, pop it in the fridge, just solidify the butter a little bit, and it'll help you when you roll it out with a rolling pin. This is one I've rested before. This has been in there for about half an hour. You can see it's soft, it's pliable, and it's going to make a good base for the fruit pies. Make myself a little bit of room, get my rolling pin, and all I'm going to do is roll out them and use cutters to line this. This is what I'm using to put my tart shells on. They're cute, they're small, it's a couple of mouthfuls. That's all it'll take to eat one of these. I've chosen several of the wines, like the meadow sweet, to go with the apricots. I think that should go quite well. Have you tried apricot wine? They we don't tend grow to, in the we, Gauri. No, they don't. <laughs> well, when the global warming uh, means you can grow them in the Karsagori, we'll maybe think about it. <laughs> so it is pure. I mean, you're very pure about it. It's literally what grows around. Yeah, yeah. No, it Apart is. Apart from the odd exception every now and again, the, the very first one I ever made was a citrus wine, which was oranges, lemons, and grapefruit. Wow. But we never made it commercial until uh, last year to celebrate our 25th year in business. Have you got the citrus one there? Yeah. I've got some here, aye. I'll just stop what I'm doing. OK. Thank you very much. What, 25 what, uh, years to celebrate. What launched the whole paper? Yeah. If, if that recipe hadn't been successful, there'd be no, no winery at all. Wow. That's quite powerful as well, isn't it? Yeah, 13.5. It's, it's the same strength, but uh, it's uh, almost spiritus, that one. <laughs> I like that. I like that a lot. That's scary. Virtually spiritual. It's one of the, yeah. It's one of those things which you can you can drink, and then it's I reckon it starts in your feet, and then you get off a bench and just sort of fall over. You know, it's quite dangerous. Um, 
So you roll it out nice and thin and then cut your bases for the pies. And all you do is fairly simple. Try and use as much space as you can. Take out your pastry and then drop it into the bottom of the tray and that's it. You just basically line them. It's that simple. I used to do little jam tarts with my mum when I was a kid. We'd line the bottom of the tray is like this, and literally just add jam to it and bake it, and that's it. And maybe put a little star, which is cut out the sweet pastry in the top, so we know which one's mine, because that was a little star for me, Mum. <laughs> OK, I've lined three of them, but let's run through these ingredients. This is the apricot. Now, I'm going to add a little bit of a slug of this meadow sweet to this as well. For the pear filling, I'm using the elderflower wine. And to complement the apple, I'm adding the elderberry. Because it's quite dry, I think I'll add a little scoopful of mascarpone straight in there as well. Don't worry if you don't have these fruit wines to hand. The beauty of these pies is that you can experiment with your own flavours. Calvados, Amaretti, beer if you like, as long as it works. Is that a strawberry one you've got there? Yeah. How's your glass? Uh, empty. Um, if I could try some of that, that'd be great. I'll just move these out of your way. This is the ones that are going home. Is There's it? nearly a pound of fresh strawberries good in uh, every glass. Really? Bottle. Oh, every glass. <laughs> I was going to say. That's fantastic. Oh, well, that's enough, isn't it? Thank you very much. That's, that's, that's absolutely fine. What's the strength of that one? Well, that's quite potent as well, isn't it? Same. Thank you. That's fine. That's lovely. That, the flavour of the strawberry is intense. Yeah. You know, it's not been messed around at all yeah. with too much sweetness. It's just a clean strawberry coming all the way through. That is absolutely... <coughs> that's absolutely that gorgeous. The strawberries, I mean, this, you would cry when you see this chopping them up, actually. Big, red, fantastic strawberries. They're beautiful. Just, and they're just from five miles away. And they come in straight from the field, chop them up into the wine straight away. Criminal, really. <laughs> <laughs> we prefer to drink them. <laughs> do you know what? So do I now. Time to tear myself away from the wine tasting and fill the pie cases with my different fruity mixtures. And then finally, I'm going to make four lids. Drop them into each tart. You can almost make the same thing with mince pie. In fact, mince pies, any one of those mm. would probably work well in a mince pie. You know, to make um, a marinade to soak, that would yeah, be, yeah. be beautiful. So what I'm going to do is just pinch around each one just to give it a little bit of a pattern and it seals the lid to the base and it just neatens it off. If you add some caster sugar straight to the top, it adds, again, a little bit of sweetness to it and it caramelises on top, and they look absolutely delicious. I bake my mini fruit pies at 200 degrees Celsius for 15 to 20 minutes until the pastry is golden brown. You've got these beautiful, very rustic-looking tarts. I'll give you a few of these out. It's still hot. The smell of the pastry, the golden pastry. Yeah, it's great. And again, a little bit of sugar to finish off with. And the final thing to do is get some of the meadow sweet. <clears throat> Toast yourself. <sighs> Those are the best individual fruit pies. Absolutely stunning. They may be small, but my fruit pies pack a big flavour punch. They're easy to make, but go down a treat. Guys, you're going to have to wait a little bit later to try them. Thank you very much. Thanks.